Howdy folks, welcome to Coffee and Tools. This week, a uh, new tool, something that's cool to look at. This is kind of an in innovative type idea that has come along, and I've started to see some variations, but this one here, they tell me, is pretty darn cool. Now, if we just get it out of the box, okay, if we just get it out of the box, we can, yeah, there we go. Well, let's get into it. I've got it out of the box. And yes, it's an aluminum protractor, but it's for measuring angles and, or even copying an angle. Say you see something that is on an angle and you want to copy it. This little baby here can lay it up so that you can get, you know, what you need. Now, I'm just going to do something here kind of squirrely because this is where protractors can defeat somebody. I've set it on the angle here for 45 degrees. And if you look at that, uh, that is, 90 that is not 45 and that's where protractors i think sometimes can really blow people's minds so one of the uh things that people have been writing to me about was this particular tack life saw now i have another saw that's going to replace this one by the looks of it but in the meantime we're still using the tack life and the fella said he was having trouble getting 90 and i'm not sure whether he was talking about the 90 degrees off the blade here to his cut or that he was having trouble 90 this way. We're really not even sure because obviously there's two possibilities. But one of the things I wanted to do with the protractor today was take a look at this and rest that nicely on the bed, rest that nicely up on the blade, take the reading here, and if we look at zero, and zero comes over here to 45 and 45. So we have a 45 and we have a 45. That's kind of what the protractor is telling me here. And like I said, it's very confusing. If you look at the 90 degree angle, you can see it's 90, 90, 90 is lined up. So it does tell you, you know, that this is 90 degrees. In fact, again, I'm not trying to say that the, the tack life is a good saw, but it's showing dead on 90. Okay, so here we are and this is where I was running here and I had to turn 45 degrees and doing this flooring work. And what happened was you get the protractor up in here or even measure it up against the wall of the house. And of course, it's not 45, it's off. And putting the protractor against here is showed to be 23.5 degrees, which is basically, like I said, it's not a 45, it's off a little bit. And what I did here when I cut these pieces was I set my saw so that I have the 23 and a half degrees and not a proper 45, which would be 22 and a half split, you know, making the turn here. So the protractor kind of saved me there. But again, I will criticize a little bit, just say it's kind of hard to read because when you look at it, you can get really confused or fouled up. And one thing I don't like about a tool is when you can get fouled up with it because you have to understand where your, the reading is coming from. Here's our uh, aluminum, new aluminum protractor, and here's a speed square. And obviously, you can measure 90 degrees or 45. That's great, but you can't measure anything else. And sometimes there are projects, um, and there are people that will uh, write down in the comment below box about how to, you know, get a different angle on this thing. Da, 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 da. I don't want to get there. It's just this is just not a simple tool when you can measure something like this and measure 20 degrees, 25, 30, whatever it is you want, and you have your two, uh, you know, two markings there where you can scribe your line or put this actually on the uh, miter saw and actually check the angle to see that you have the correct angle and get a reading off of, the, off of this right here. So that's pretty cool. Now, let's take a quick look where this would totally, you know, would be a fail. Here's a good example of a situation where a protractor would come in handy, or, well, did come in handy. Uh, had to replace a little piece of the wood up in that window, and again, you're not talking 45 or 90 degrees. You're talking very specific angle all the way around to get that window right. And a protractor is going to make a job like that a lot easier task. You can even read the old angle and copy it right to the miter saw. So that's just, a, like I said, that's just an example. Another example would be come on down here a little bit, and you can see these these pieces here were cut in on a very specific angle. And again, 
to make these new shutters, because these are new ones that replace the old ones, I had to be able to actually copy using a protractor to get those angles so I could have the exact same angle because the wood was so rotten <laughs> you couldn't even scratch a pencil to uh, copy the, uh, the original angles. But just, just some, you know, something to keep in mind. So here we are at the ye old miter saw. And this one here specifically is a very old Hitachi, but it will go up to 45 degrees on this side. But if so, if you needed 46 and a half, which I did <laughs> over here on this side, we go up past 50, you know, almost 55, 66, almost 50, 60 degree uh, angle cut on the back side of the Hitachi. And I'll just move this out of the way. So where we ended up with uh, some of those cuts was 22.5, as you were, if you remember, I showed you inside, and they were actually 23 and a half. So I actually had to, you know, play around a little bit and gauge this cut right here in order to make that accurate. And again, if you have a little bit of OCD and you're running flooring, uh, something like this can answer the question that you could not, you know, otherwise resolve. Uh, one of the nice things about the protractor is that you can use it in terms with your miter saw. On the uh, miter saw, the other thing you can do with something like this is of course check your miter saw and just see if, you know, just check and see if you're straight, you know, to where you should be because uh, miter saws when they come out of the box, a lot of times they're pretty good but they're not always data accurate and sometimes you have a little play back here at the zero or something and this sort of thing here will help you zero in to where it's right exactly dead on. So let's take the saw down and just measure, see if we can measure the blade. And let's see if I can lock the saw down, it would be nice. I think we can, there we go. Now this blade is now locked down and the miter saw is not plugged in, by the way. Just stop typing, the miter saw is not plugged in. Now. This is set, I've just set the gauge here at 90, and I'm just checking against the blade, and I'm also checking against the back fence, and just sort of making sure that the, you know, my saw is accurate. Listen, it's a real handy device, but say you want to check something else, like say you want to come across here to the, uh, oh, pick something here. Let's pick, uh, oh heck, let's pick 10 degrees, and see the, the saw has no lock there at that point. So when you're dealing with something like that, you can dial this in, you know, off the zero again. So let's see, we're gonna measure this at uh, 10 degrees from 45 would be 55. So this is a really tight little machine here, by the way. Just so you know, okay, I've lined it up to 55 degrees. So I'm, I'm 10 degrees different. So now I can put this up here, bring my blade into it. And again, this will help me set up that miter saw because this saw is bouncing around a little bit. It's not telling me where it needs to be. But this way, you can get the exact amount here that you want on an angle that you've measured off of this. Uh, it's like, uh, if you want to copy, say you have an unknown angle, you can copy it with this. This is a nice stiff tool. It doesn't, you know, it's not, believe me, it's not easy to move around. It takes a little bit of force to get this to move. But you can copy an angle with this, bring it to your miter saw, and then set that angle to the blade so you can get an accurate cut. And technically at that point, you don't even have to be able to read all this fancy stuff on here because really all you're doing is sort of feeling that angle out with this and getting it and bringing it over here to duplicate. So that's just a, an application. Like, So just like on the box, we'll start with the first step, which is to check, in this case, we'll want to do a miter cut. So I've already set this at, at the 45, which as you know, technically, this is 90 here, but at the 45, here's our cut, and this is showing us, you know, where this is. That is the first, I guess we would say the first choice of the saw. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> start over again. And that is the first uh, scale for accurate miter cut and single cut. So in a single cut, you'd want to set this up here, and of course your arrow's right there showing you that this is the 45 that's coming through the center of the board here. Yeah, like I said, this is going to get a little confusing for some, and this is not, uh, an, you know, not an easy tool to use for everybody, but 
if you learn to use a protractor correctly, you know, it can be a pretty amazing cut. So here's an unusual project for a protractor. Well, a protractor would be handy or is handy for this. This is a pirate's treasure chest that I made uh, some years ago. And one of the things that you need to do is you need to figure out what this angle is of these boards. Now, once you've got one calculated and figured out, you can come across and create the whole top. But when you have notes in a protractor, you can figure out what the degrees is. And then after that, you know what you need to set your saw at so you can get the little each board that comes together. And then you glue this in order to create the top. This was, uh, <clears throat> you know, a few years ago, but it's just one of those applications where a protractor makes this part here a lot easier to deal with. Just a handy tool overall, especially if you get into angles. There's no uh, instructions uh, beyond that with this particular packaging here. What you get is you sh they, they show you some pictures here, or, or guidance type pictures, where they show you some basic applications of the uh, protractor. It's aluminum, so it should last a, a lifetime. And it's really more or less more for the miter saw, just as it says, it's, it's really a, a miter gauge for, you know, for working with that saw and, and able to get the accurate measurements you need. But when you're using a tool like this, you have to be really mindful of these scales and what you're actually looking at and reading. Uh, if I want to do 20 degrees, I look at that zero there and take that out to say 20 degrees like that. And I know that this right here is now a 20 degree incline. It just something you have to be mindful of but i want to thank saker saker for sending this over so we could have a look at this proto this protractor i've got a link that they supplied which will give you a discount uh price on this so you can order one if you'd like to have one i definitely will be keeping this in my toolbox for the future and anytime i run into something which seems like uh, every few weeks we seem to run into an angle problem somewhere where we need to measure this will get me out of trouble, hopefully. Uh, and also, if you keep the box in good shape, uh, don't tear the box up too much, I think you can actually, hopefully, you can, yep, store it back in the box. Let's see if we can do that. <laughs> I think we can get it back in the box without tearing it up. Yeah, well, maybe. Uh, so we can store it back in the box and keep it handy and I would keep it around with uh, your metal rulers, uh, compasses, anything along that line where you like to keep a protractor available. This is something for the miter saw that you want, but also even on the table saw, if you're having a funky angle thing going on, this is the kind of tool that's gonna help you, you know, proceed. So in the description below, we will offer a link for this and uh, Guys and girls, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools this week. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be getting into a 3D printer, I believe, so we'll see how that goes. This should be fun. Contest from last week, before I forget. Ah, uh, how can I forget? Now, fellow's name, uh, he wrote in. He was the very first person to get in. And so what we're doing is we're doing a two-release book. Uh, I'm releasing one book, the very first person that entered, uh, which was Joe Anderson in... Newcastle, Indiana. So Joe, this is going out to you tomorrow. Congratulations. And I also have a second book which I am sending off to a young fella by the name of David over in Kansas. He knows who he is, I think. And But Joe, uh, congrats on that one. Same with David, congrats. Uh, Joe was the very first person to get in. And I thought, that's kind of cool. You know, when you're the first person to race into something, you should get something. So. Joe, you got a book. Okay, cool.